my message today to you is go beyond believing into acting. Go beyond believing into acting. That's what David did when he heard the news about Goliath and what was going to happen to his people. He moved. He moved into faith. Said, this is not going to happen. Nobody's going to turn us into slaves and take us over. Take my country, take my family, take my brother, take my sister, take, my, take, take, take the ministry, take my children. I'm not going to let that happen. So he went personally to deal with that Goliath. Praise the Lord. And that is called taking authority, going beyond believing into acting. Thank you, Jesus. So if we, if, we, if we want to continue the work that Christ has set before us, we've got to go from believing into acting. And I'm not talking about acting, fake acting. I'm not talking about that kind of acting. I'm talking about moving, taking action, taking authority, praise the Lord, that we've been given by our Lord Jesus Christ. You must know who you are. You must know who you are in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the head and I am not the tail. I am above only and I am not beneath. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper, period. Once you know who you are, you will not allow the enemy to define you, whether it's in your workplace, it's in your family, amongst friends, and they might think you're proud. Oh, you are this and you are that. No, I am who I am in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I am what he says that I am. You are, because the great I am. When Moses said, Lord, what must I say to the people? When I get there, said, tell them that I am has sent me. I am the I am that I am. God has made you who you are in him. Praise the Lord. And so that authority means that you've got the backing of heaven. That's what Jesus is saying. Continue believing into action. You've got the backing of heaven. So you're not going in your own name. You're not going under your own authority. You're going in the name of the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. The name of Jesus Christ. And, and let's go to Luke chapter 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. What did Jesus say there? I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Jesus said, I have given you authority. Authority. I've given you my backing, my power. Over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I'm giving you authority over the, the Bible is not saying that the enemy has no power. But I'm giving you authority over that power. I'm giving you authority over the power of witchcraft. I'm giving you authority over anything that is not in alignment with the word of God. I'm giving you authority to go and take charge. Go and exercise my power over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them, crush them, crush them. Nothing will injure you. Nothing will by no means harm you. You will not be injured. Don't be afraid of witches, wizards, all these things, you know. I mean, sometimes when I pray, the enemy will come and whisper, do you see the damage you do? We're going to deal with you. And I'm as deaf as ever. Because I've dealt with you. You understand? Don't even come near me. I cast you out in Jesus' name. That is it. And I want you to understand that no matter how close you are to God, the enemy will try and attack you. Yes, he will try. That's his job. So there's no question of why am I under attack? There's no, question. There's no need for me to be wasting time on that question. Why am I under attack? Why am I always attacked? No, because you're the friend of God. You love Jesus. Jesus loves you. You're fellowshipping with your God. He's jealous of you. So he will try and distract you with different attacks. And he's wanting you to confess. Why don't you curse God and die like Job's wife? But because you know who your God is, you know who you are in Christ. You're not going to give him room of day. You're just going to be praising your God, thanking him, fellowshipping with him and casting them out. It does not mean that because you're close to God, you will not hear some voices. 
but you've got to take authority and take charge over those voices. He's given you the power, the authority over all the power of the enemy, all the voices of the enemy, all the machinations of the enemy, all the hexes, all the spells, all the witchcraft, all the arrows of the enemy. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so when you've got the power of, of, of God right behind you, you know that you don't have the power. You can't use your strength. I can't use my strength to fight any battle. <laughs> but when I take the authority, the backing of the Lord with me, listen, we're victorious in Jesus' mighty name. And what do you do? You know, you know if your car is on the road right now and the police come out on the road and they put their hand up and stop you, what will you do in that car? Are you going to drive through him? Are you going to drive past him? You're going to stop. So you're going to tell the enemy, stop in the name of Jesus. I command you, stop. They cannot go beyond that authority in the name of Jesus. You must use the name of Jesus. He said, I have given you authority. He gave it to you. Use his name. Do you know when I was uh, doing craft shows, when I was still running my business and doing craft shows all over the country? And because we were set up by the Prince's Trust, that is the name that I would use to get good spaces, a good position. So anywhere we're exhibiting, I'll say, you know, we'll be, we were set up by the Prince's Trust, you know. And once they hear the Prince's Trust, oh, yes, oh, blah, blah, blah. can we get a discount? They will give us a discount. They'll give us a good position where we can display all our stuff. They give us a good stand. And we use that authority. We use that influence. We have to use the authority that is in the name of Jesus because you are already favored of God. You're already empowered. You don't need to go and meet one prophet from nowhere. The Lord Jesus Christ himself is speaking to you right now that I have given you favor. So anytime we go and we exhibit, you know, in those rich areas of sorry and those lowly go down me in all those places, you know, we will get a good place to, to, to display and people would come to us. Oh, it was set up by the places trials. You know, it, it, it's a conversation starter. And I still use it today. If I'm going to put my website out there, I will use that picture. Because we have to be wise as a serpent. It draws people. Americans are always fascinated. They will send me an email. Oh, what is the thing with the, with the prince? Now the king. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So can you imagine the amount of respect and the awe and the authority that comes behind the name of royalty? So me shaking his hand and him telling me that, oh, my, my grandma, which was the queen mother of old, you know, he said, my grandma would like one of these calves because I used to hand paint on silks. And the Lord showed me that that's just a prince on earth. How much more me, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That was just a photo with a prince that is it, it, still, still working. How much more the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every knee must bow. Witches, wizards, evil people, rulers of the darkness of this world, wickedness in high places must bow. All those evil in your office will bow at the name of Jesus. Use your authority. Move into action. Move into action. Step out in front of the devil. Hold up your hand and say, stop in the name of Jesus. Stop in my job. Stop in my office. Stop over my marriage. Stop now in the name of Jesus. Stop over this ministry. Stop. I gave the testimony yesterday how, you know, I, I went in, in, into the bathroom to do something. And uh, as I was just getting to, to do whatever I went there to do, I saw the spirit came at me like an arrow into my eyes. It's not something fell into my eyes. God opened my eyes to see because I'm a seer. Initially, I didn't accept it because I said, why am I seeing this different thing? It's a gift of God. So God exposed the enemy's plans to me. We must be alert. We must be on fire for God. 
We must be reading the word of God. We must soak ourselves in the things of God because you don't know when the enemy is moving. That was like 2.30 a.m. at night. Just shut in there. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you out in Jesus' name. Get out from me. I cast them. Whatever that assignment is, I bind it right now. I cast you out. And I'm telling you, they can be stubborn. These demons can be stubborn. They might pretend like they've gone. You've got to know that they've gone. I said, you will not come near me in Jesus' name. I cast you out. Get out of my home. Get out right now. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus against you. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. Masala makaseki. I just saw that thing fly out of the window. It fizzled into nothing. That was spiritual. So may the Lord open the eyes of our understanding. May he open our spiritual eyes to see. That was what Elijah did, Elisha did to, to his, that servant. He was afraid. He came and he said, Master, Master, they're coming. You know, that's how we are. Oh, God, they're coming against me. Oh, dear. And Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes to see. And then he opened his eyes and he saw the chariots of heaven already there to fight for them. Heaven has fought your battle and won it. Exercise your authority. Exercise your authority. Elisha wasn't moved. Nothing moved him. And you'd be thinking, it's like when Jesus was sleeping on the boat. And he said, Master, is that you? If that is you, bids me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter put his feet on the water. He began to sink. He said, Master, do you not care that we die here? We perish here? Oh, what's going on? And you are sleeping over my issue. Sometimes we say that to God. We must stop all those conversations with God. I'm not saying that we're not normal or we go through. Yes, it's good, but we must move away from there. I remember I used to ask God, why? Why this? Why is this happening to me? And I was constantly under attack. Constant. It was like I didn't come from the same family. I'm telling you. My life was full of attack, 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 attack. To the point where I'm thinking, you know what? Is it even worth it? Until one day, God opened my eyes. I said, from today, Lord, I will never ask you why again. That's about 35 years ago. I haven't asked God why. I don't ask him why. Don't ask him the why of it. I don't know. There's no point in dwelling where you don't know. Let me tell you, God loves you more than you can ever think or imagine. He loves you. I understand. We live in a dead world, a stricken world, a broken world. Things will happen. People will die. Something happens. We can't control everything. We don't understand everything, but one thing we know. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In that adversity, he is there, right there. And he's saying, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Use it. I've given you all these resources. Use it. And the authority that is given to us, he got it from the Father. Praise the Lord. So can you see the connection? Jesus is not giving you any authority of his own, but the authority that he's given to you is from the Father in heaven. They work together as one. Come into the kingdom and work as one with the Lord. You cannot do anything by yourself. Everything that Jesus did was connected to the Father. So if you set up a business today, you must connect it to Jesus. You must dedicate it to the Lord. When you have a child, we dedicate it to we dedicate every child to the Lord. It's not baptism, it's dedication. We give them back to God and say, Father, this is your son. Thank you for giving him to us. We bless you for him today. Apart from the naming, we do the dedication. Dedicate everything. Dedicate everything to the Lord. Every single thing, nothing missing. Your children, your job, your business, your new idea, everything. And you'll see that the enemy won't have time for you. Because he's already out of your, of your system. You are in alignment with the will of God. Praise the Lord. Matthew 28. Let me read it to you. Matthew 28, 18. When the 72 disciples came back and they were so excited, they were happy, they were joyful. 
And they said, Lord, even the demons obeyed, they submitted to us when we use your name. Can you say the power that is in the name of Jesus? Demons will submit to you when you use the name of Jesus. I've used it this morning. Yeah, I have to take authority. You have to. In your home, with your children, in your job, with your finances, you take authority. You think the enemy is not interested in your finances. He doesn't want you rich. He doesn't want your bank account to be stable. He wants you troubled. He will try every area. You take authority over that child that is whinging and moaning and crying. And rah, rah, rah. You take authority. That you spirit that is irritating this child. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Lose him and let him go right now. In Jesus' name. Every irritation we live. There was a time I, I just thought, what's happening? You know, it's like I knocked my leg here. I dropped something there. I've forgotten something. Something was just happening that was unusual. And please pay attention and take notice. And I, I realized that it's a spirit of clumsiness, you know. I'm becoming clumsy somehow. It's not me. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority against clumsiness right now. I'm not going to be falling over and forgetting things. I know what's going on here. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Get out. Thank you, Lord. And so when these disciples went out, they were so happy. They came back and said, Lord, 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 the demons obeyed. They submitted to us in your name. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus witnessed the defeat of Satan. He had witnessed it already. And he's telling you, look, he's already defeated. Just take authority. Just knock him out. That's it. And then in verse 19, he says, listen, behold, look, I have given you power, which means authority. I've given you the power, the authority to walk on, huh, to trample upon serpents and scorpions, walk over them, walk on them, trample them over. I've given you a power that is greater than the power of the enemy. I've given you authority over all the power, a power that is greater than the power of the enemy. So nothing shall by any means harm you when you're operating under the shadow of the Almighty. Nothing can come and harm you. Nothing can come and harm you. I mean, I grew up in a Christian home, yes. But we were just initially nominal Christians. And I remember one day, I sat there, I was reading, I was just a teenager. I couldn't have been more than 13 or 14, something like that. I sat down and I was reading. I don't know what happened. I looked up and there was a snake above my head. On the pelmet there, there was a snake. I called my mom. Mom, there's a snake. She looked and I thank God. She, she, she's such a calm, calm, she was such a calm person, you know. And she said, come. She called somebody, she said, get rid of the snake. She wasn't even moved. They got rid of the snake. They killed that snake and burnt it. Because in African culture, if a snake comes into your house, don't leave that snake. Because <laughs> the enemy can translate into snake, into rat, into whatever. You know, when you live in a different culture that don't understand the spiritual things that the enemy can translate into an animal, you, you will take things for granted. Somebody will say, oh, you know, you are, you know, you are, you're this and you're wicked. Well, <laughs> this is spiritual. Life is spiritual. And they burnt that snake. Who knew what the enemy was coming to do? I was still young. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. I wasn't prophesying. I hadn't even given my life to Christ. Who knew whether he wanted to kill me before anything even happened? But the grace of God, that grace of God, that grace upon the righteous and the unrighteous was already upon me. So how much more now that we are in Christ Jesus? The amount of power that is available unto you. The Lord says, I've given you power that is greater than the enemy has. And then he told them again, he said, well, don't be rejoicing over this because the spirits obey you, because they submit to you. Listen, the spirits will submit to you. They will obey you. So that is not a, an issue with Christ. He wasn't surprised. He knew that Satan had fallen and been defeated. So that's not anything. He said, look, don't rejoice over that. Don't be happy because of that alone, but because your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, because your names are written in heaven. That is our priority. That all these things that are on earth, look, you will deal with them. Deal with them. It's okay. I've seen it. Once you exercise the authority I've given you that the Father gave me, they will submit to you. But don't dwell there. 
I want you to rejoice that your name is written in heaven, in the Lamb's book of life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me quickly read a scripture to you. You know, because right now Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And we're seated there with him. I want you to know your positioning in Christ. Because if you don't know your position in Christ, you won't know how to operate. Look, when a manager comes to you, they're operating under the authority of managerial duties. Right? And they know who they are. When the executive director comes in, the manager is subject to him or her. So it's a hierarchy of authority. But the, the biggest authority of all has given us all power. So what God is saying is, I've given you the authority to come on this earth and manage everything around you. Rule over everything. He gave us dominion in Genesis to rule over all the animals, all these things of the sea, whatever it is. In our realm, he gave us that dominion. And then on top of that, Jesus gave us authority over spiritual issues. He gave us authority over all the power of the enemy. So why would somebody come say, oh, you know, the witches are chasing me. You know, uh, I'm, I'm having this. And no, take authority. If it's bad dreams, nightmares, take authority and watch what we do. You can't be watching Netflix, watching some horrific something there or listening to some uh, lyrics that are demonically produced and expecting to have good dreams. Don't fall asleep whilst you're watching something that you don't know what they're saying. Turn it off. Because we live in the age of watch, watch, watch everything online. And the eye is a gateway to the soul. The eye, the ears, the gateways. So we've got to watch and pray and be very alert. Praise the Lord. Let me read what uh, Jesus says here in verse 21. In, in, in This is uh, Matthew st still uh, 28 verse 21 says, Then at that time in the same hour, Jesus rejoiced and was full of joy in the Holy Spirit. And he said, I praise you, Father Lord of heaven and earth. He was thanking the God of heaven and earth because you have hidden these things from the people who are wise, all those learned, intelligent Pharisees. God has hidden these things from them. But you have revealed them to those who are like children, like little children. That's us. He has revealed them to us, us with a childlike faith. And he says, yes, Father, because that is what you really wanted. That is what pleases you. Praise the Lord. It pleases the Lord to give you revelation knowledge. Don't think it's just pastors and prophets and this. No, God is giving you revelation. It pleases him to do that. And he says in verse 22, my father has given me all things. What that means is he has entrusted to me. He has committed to me all things. Everything is given me. No one knows who the son is except the father. And no one knows who the father is except the son. And those whom the son chooses to tell it to. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit reveals the deep things of God. You want to know the deep things of God, the Holy Spirit will bring it according to the will of the Father. Praise the Lord. And then Jesus spoke to his disciples. He turned to them, you and I. And he said to them, privately, the Bible says privately, he turned to them. And he said, you are blessed. You are blessed, my sister. You are blessed, my brothers. You are blessed to see what you now see. What he's saying is that blessed are the eyes. Your eyes are blessed to see. What I'm seeing is what you are seeing. You know, I pray one prayer. I say, Lord, help me to see the way you see. Help me to see the way you see. I want to see through your lens. And now as disciples of God, we are seeing through the lens of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And he says, I tell you, many prophets and kings wanted to see what you now see. <laughs> and they couldn't. But they did not. They wanted to hear what you now hear, but they did not. That is a blessing. God is saying you are blessed because you are mine. You are blessed because you are with me. You are blessed because you abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your family are blessed because you are constantly under the shadow of the Almighty. You are in the world day and night. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And now we're sat, we're sat with him. God who is rich in mercy has sat us with Jesus in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look, stop crying. Stop crying. Stop crying. And begin to live in your inheritance. Begin to possess your possessions. 
Praise the Lord. Begin to, he's given us new life through Christ. We've got new life. The old man is dead. Don't weep anymore. Don't mourn like unbelievers. I'm not saying we don't have feeling. We must have compassion for one another. But what I'm saying is you must continue to move from victory to victory. We cannot dwell in adversity. We must move into victory from one victory to another level of victory to another level of victory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we've been saved by God's grace. And the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 6, he has raised us up with Christ and given us a seat with him in the heavenly places. He's done that for those in Christ Jesus. We have a seat in heavenly places. That's why you can do impossible things. Because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you wake up from a bad nightmare, a bad dream, whatever it is, wake up and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority, the authority that Jesus gave me from you. I take that authority right now and I rebuke you, the devil. Get out. Nightmares, you will not come back to me in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Perhaps the next day, you have something is, you will get up and say the same thing. They will leave you alone. He did three times. He tempted Jesus three times. You would have thought the first time that Jesus said, get the, he would just go. No. He came back and he came back. And Jesus drove him away finally. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, for a time. So he comes and he goes. He has no rest. A lady gave a testimony of how when she used to be a witch, at the age of about 13, she was a huge witch for her area. She was controlling the area, a 13-year-old. She said she caused a lot of accidents. She caused a lot of chaos, you know. And she said that one thing they never have in the kingdom of darkness, she's exposing the devil now because she's in Christ. In the kingdom of darkness, they don't have peace and they don't have sleep. They don't sleep. Guess what the Bible says? There is no peace for the wicked, said the Lord. They don't have peace. She said because when she's going to sleep, the demons will gag her. They will try and strangle her. They don't give her peace because they don't have peace. If your king ain't resting, you ain't resting. If your king don't have peace, you're not going to have peace. But our king is a prince of peace. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I give you praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's the prince of peace. He's the prince of peace. The king of kings. He says, the Bible says, he gives his beloved sleep. And their sleep is sweet. Oh, Satan, you're so jealous. <laughs> so you want to try and give me nightmares? When God has given me sweet sleep, will you get the hands right now? Get out! In Jesus' name. And you will sleep like a baby. You get up and they're envious of you. Which is not sleep. That's why they wake up in the night. They'll be operating from midnight until 3 a.m. What's wrong with you people? We are sleeping in Christ. We have peace. We have joy. We have angels on assignment. We are protected in Christ Jesus. So we must not live in fear. Don't be afraid of them. They cannot do anything to you because you are sat with Christ in a place of spiritual authority. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we're to rule and to reign in this life. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here and we'll continue. This message is broad, I'm telling you. So I will leave you with this. Christ is the head. We are his body. All right? So nothing. Look, Christ is the head. We are his body. So the authority that comes from the head, guess what? The body uses it. Use your authority. What is his is ours. If he's our head, what is his is mine. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Just walk majestically. Right? Speak the word in faith. Rest there. Don't be troubled. Don't let fear frazzle you. You know, that's what they do. They speak. Their aims, they're down there trample upon them those scorpions and serpents and live an abundant life amen thank you lord jesus i'm going to leave it here reign and rule and remain seated in christ where your rulership is praise the lord hallelujah we'll come back again next week by the grace of god amen you know so i just want to encourage us this morning to know who we are in christ you're phenomenal you're dangerous that's why they hate you. You're dangerous. Jesus loves you too, too, too much. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh, oh, too much. Oh, too much. Oh, excess love. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
He loves you too much. Excess love. The love that went to the cross, the love that died, the love that shed his blood of Calvary, the, the love that the blood is still speaking greater things than the blood of Abel. How beautiful are you? You're gorgeous. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is beautiful. Glory be to God. You are victorious because Jesus is victorious. You are living in abundance of life because Jesus has given us life and everything that pertains unto life and godliness is yours. Glory be to God. May the Lord continue to bless us all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you don't have authority. You can't use the same authority that the children of God use because you have not given your life to Christ. You have to come into partnership with the King to be able to use his name. You have to be submitted to the King to be able to say, look, the King has sent me. To be able to use his name. So I'm praying for you today that you will give your life to Jesus. Will you come? Will you come right now? Jesus is saying, come and I will make you fishers of men. Come and I will give you peace. Come and I will restore your joy. Come and you will become victorious in Jesus' name. And so will you pray after me and say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today and submit my will to you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for who you are. I surrender my life to you today. I ask you to come and be my personal Lord and Savior. As from this moment forward, I repent of my ways. I repent of my sins. I ask you, Jesus, please forgive me my trespasses. Forgive me my sins. Even as I forgive those who have trespassed against me. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from every evil. From today, I choose as an act of my will to give my life to you. Let your Holy Spirit come into my heart and teach me the things of the kingdom. I thank you for accepting me from now forward. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We welcome you into the kingdom of our Savior, into the kingdom of our God. And I'm telling you, you will experience a peace that passes every understanding. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. And thank you for praying that prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you.